so uh, thanks for having us. Um, I've uh, been a, a associated with Delray Artisans very near the uh, inception of it. I joined in late 1992 and was taking pictures back then. So I want to thank you all for uh, reaching out and letting us do a little pre presentation on living legends. Hope you all are staying safe and being well and creative. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to just say is uh, the, the City Hall exhibit, which is uh, every year, except the last year, they do get switched out. So there is a new batch of legends that's on display. Um, when they come down from that lobby, they had been going over to the city. And um, right now we would, mom and I would like them to stay with the city, but uh, Living Legends is, I think, hoping to be able to give them to the artists, to, to the subjects. Um, and it's kind of a, uh, over the last 15 years, there have been some, is that Catherine? Hi, Catherine. Um, so uh, it, it's just a matter of what they decide to do, what kind of, mom kind of uh, let go after, after a while. So it's, uh, um, when she let go, I kind of let go. So um, let me figure out what screen I am sharing here. And uh, um, part of what we've been asked to do is just talk about living legends and how we photograph them and uh, what it means to the, the city and the community. So the mission statement for living legends is to identify, honor, and chronicle the lives of individuals have made a, a significant contribution to the community. Um, I changed the words because after 10 years of learning what that pitch was, um, Living Legends changed their uh, the mission statement a little bit that I have from back when it was first started. Um, as many of you know, uh, Nina, my mother, um, started Living Legends back in um, 2006. And um, I'm crossing over that image, but um, in 2006, there were, there were um, both the city and the Gazette packet came to us looking for images and there just wasn't there, uh, they weren't available. Uh, I, remember, I remember mom going through the, the contact sheets of all these events looking for, images of these people and they just weren't there. And she was so frustrated. She said, well, how do I fix this? Mom has always been a planner. I always joke with people that she planned so far ahead that she uh, wanted, she knew she was gonna be help, going to need help as a photographer. So she had me uh, 58 years ago to uh, carry on her vision. So uh, the first Living Legends Committee brought together people from the Gazette Packet, the Rotary, and the Lyceum. Uh, the first year, there were about 50 people nominated. And um, at that point, there were 12 legends each year that were selected. And the idea being that the Gazette Packet would run one legend, one profile every month. Um, and the next year, the images were uh, exhibited at the Lyceum. Uh, the first two years, they were at the Lyceum. The, uh, I need to do a quick check here, my text. So um, the, uh, the, the one slide I kind of glossed over was uh, um, back in the early 80s when mom was taking her classes at, at Nova, um, she took a class in photography to reward herself for a really hard class she was taking. And at the same time, she started photography. I'd already been there for a few years pursuing a degree in commercial art. Um, when she asked me if I could help her in the dark room, I said no. And then when I checked the curriculum, it said that photography was part of it. And I uh, said, well, I might as well say yes. What, what do I have to do in my mid 20s that's any more important? Um, and, and for that job at the I'm just looking at my cursor. So um, she was paid very little. She made $5 a picture, but she could shoot whatever she wanted. And it was always soft news, except maybe for when Reagan 
uh, went to Christ Church back in 81, something like that. So, but she, she was always in town photographing the fairs and the festivals. And she really fell in love with the city of Alexandria. Um, it, was, it was kind of a magical time uh, for her. She, she didn't leave her full-time job until, um, I, I think until 85. I was with her in part-time in 85 and I joined her full-time in 88. And my sister also joined because uh, my mom is terrible with numbers, but my sister uh, was doing book, um, was an assistant manager at the Holiday Inn in Springfield and was good with numbers. So Lynn was a, a pretty good fit for that. Um, so in photographing the legends, one of the things that's always been important um, is where they're photographed and we want to keep um, the pictures to tell a story of who they are and what they've done for the city. It's not always possible, but we've, uh, um, everybody has a different kind of uh, place where that is special to them, even if they don't have an off um, kind of a place that really works. A lot of the portraits are outside. And one of the things that's really important when we're doing these portraits outside is that I always check the weather beforehand just to make sure um, it's not gonna be raining on the day of the portrait, which is uh, it, it just, as you, as you know, it's not good. Um, hold on. I'm just making sure that I'm full screen on this. So, um, So checking the weather is really important. I always, um, nine times out of 10, will go do a go-see, which is seeing uh, what areas that are available to shoot. So when I had um, photographed Marlin and um, Catherine, there were um, two or three places I knew that I wanted to shoot. And Sorry, I can't get rid of this bar at the top. There it goes. So, um, so we photographed them inside. Um, I don't think Marlon liked the glasses. Um, the smile was a little bit awkward on that one. Um, sun in the eyes was a little bit because he's squinting on that one. Sitting in the bench was okay, but then you had the little um, power outlet beside them, and we ended up with picking the image where. I'm pretty sure she had feedback on this. I, I don't really recall. Um, typically, the portraits have a lot more information in the background that kind of tell what's going on with, with the portrait. Um, one of the things you may notice is that the, the portraits, the heads on this catalog cover are all about the same size. When we're doing the portraits, uh, excuse me, the, um, some of, some of these portraits were full length, showing a lot of background. Some were just showing a little bit of background. And uh, these images were printed along with the text. And every store, every, every legend had a little story that was also taken from them. And of course, uh, it's always easier to take their picture and write their stories when they're still alive. I'm pretty sure that... Uh, um, Few of you are laughing. So um, the legends, um, one of the things you may notice about the portraits presented here is that they're all done and uh, presented in black and white. In the early years, mom shot on black and white film and as film became harder and harder to process and print, we switched over to digital, but we kept the black and white uh, format just because it's, um, it's always been kind of a, an endearing uh, presentation to us and has given, um, it, removing the color means that we're not distracted by bright stripes of orange or uh, um, things that are just um, distracting. So, and the other thing that it, it ensures is that over the years, if they're all at some point over and over the year, they 
we have had exhibits that had multiple years. So it's all kind of ties together that um, portraits can be hung together from different years and you're not looking at the style of the um, clothing too much. So uh, Roger is here, although you may not know him directly, Roger was, um, was important on getting Delray Artisan started. He was uh, the landlord of the very first property that was given to uh, or leased to Living Legends for a minimal fee. I think it basically covered the, uh, um, the electricity and I, I doubt it covered taxes because I think it was only a couple hundred dollars a month. Um, um, you may know Carol and Ryan, um, Al Grandy, who was a legend in 2012, uh, who started ASAP, and it's, it's quite a, a fascinating story. Some of these stories you can still find on, or all of them should be available on Living Legends website. But Al gave free printing to, I'm pretty sure it was free from what Catherine's mentioned, but gave free um, printing of some of the material that was used in the Delray Artisan. Um, uh, Rosa here is a um, teacher at the elementary school right behind the uh, center. And she's a, a, a teacher um, or a school and student liaison. So one of the things that I wanted to point out here is that she's, she's in her office. It was uh, she had suggested going out by the caboose and the caboose doesn't really even show anything that, um, you know, except it shows the school and it's a nice landmark, but it was, it's just really distracting. So um, in this picture, I'm shooting down on her a little bit. I am using still flash. The flash is off to one side and the lighting is, is what's referred to as like a, a, a two, three ratio so that one side isn't all in the dark. It's, it's um, gives a nice, um, contour to her face. And in this case, yes, I did keep showing her the image in and she kept on moving this book that had her name on it. And she went, she um, wanted to make sure that she liked the image before it um, was done. I didn't take the picture of Matt, uh, of Pat Miller here. Uh, one of our uh, stringers who was helping us and um, looking into this, but um, you all know Pat, or you should know Pat from, um, I believe it was helping him, um, or I'm sorry, uh, mom, what was it? Mom? What was the question? Wh where was Pat, uh, her store was? She was, was helping in her shop, show of hands. Show of hands. Because I know it wasn't helping him. Um, but again, it's a nice expression. Um, Joe wasn't happy with the first shoot, so he went back and did it again. Um, so, um, and when uh, I photographed Gail, and Gail, um, Catherine didn't know she was a founding member, but her, her husband was Rob Ruder, and um, uh, she wasn't not nominated for working with Living with uh, Delray Artisans, I don't think, but it was just her. Um, immense support to the community. Um, I first photographed her when she was putting up some lights on the Christmas pole. And I, I always bring a step stool with me, but I couldn't get a shot where I was level with her. And I was always shooting um, up at her a little bit. And it's one of the most unflattering views if you're shooting up at a person. Um, so uh, when, we, when I went back, it was chilly and I fed the porch and she said, oh, I'm always on my porch. So we chose the porch and it's, um, she's got a little squint, but she looks good and she's happy. I was happy. Um, Jen Walker, um, when I do the portraits outside, I, I, I still bring a step stool with me, but I tend to um, kind of go with, well, what's important for this image, whether I'm gonna shoot um, down on somebody or up. Yeah, you may have you may have noticed from the picture of uh, Carol and Ryan that I was really shooting way down on them, and that's partly to diminish like under the chin and um, shooting down also kind of foreshortens the body a little bit. And I shot them in like five different places over there near Miracle Field, and um, presented them to Janie Janie Theisman, 
And although it wasn't my favorite, it was the one that the art director chose. And um, of course, you're working for somebody else, that's what they want. They're sitting on the wall that has their name on it. And I just couldn't get any higher to get that name visible, which is, is just one of the things that things that bother me may not bother somebody else. And uh, uh, and of course, the, the Yates, they're just, uh, it was a good portrait. It was important for them to have Yates Corner in the picture, but they're actually standing on a on a bucket, and I'm shooting up at them a little bit. But to to get these things lining up, it was kind of kind of a challenge, and and uh, not that they're vain. Everybody just wants to look at it. Um, and they were happy with the finish and I was happy. So uh, it was kind of a win-win solution. Um, as, as far as the other things that uh, um, I was gonna talk about, as far as um, what makes a good picture is uh, whenever I'm looking at artwork or portraits, I always um, notice the first thing that my eye is drawn to. And part of what I feel makes good art is what is a, um, engaging image and what kind of gives your eyes a uh, visual playground. So uh, keeping that in mind when I do the shoots, um, typically or almost 100% of the time we avoid portraits where the person is straight on towards the camera. We always do portraits where the person is a little angled. It just adds uh, some dynamics to the picture. Um, I know that although Jason and Lauren are, are kind of close towards the camera here, but they both have a slight angle. Um, there's also sort of a, a working ratio where you want faces uh, not right above each other or level, you kind of want a slight angle to the portrait. So um, a lot of things go into effect when we do the portraits, the location inside, outside, um, and, uh, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but I, I do check the weather when we're doing shoots outside and uh, make sure it's not raining. Um, Pre-scope them. Um, it's, it's important to have the subjects relaxed and, and I've been doing portraits um, for over 30 years and, and I'm, I'm sure that people just uh, have their own, like I would rather be on the other side of this camera um, than, than here. Um, I'm more comfortable being behind the camera, but um, I'm very good with retouching. And if I tell, if I see a person has this worried look in their eye, I just say, well, I'm really good with retouching, but I can't take out the worry. And uh, it usually gets a pretty good smile and they start to relax a little bit. Uh, all the legends, um, in the portraits I do, I create a little website similar to what uh, the thumbnails are here. And clients will pick their favorite and I'll do a little bit of retouching and then get them approved. So I don't know if uh, you can tell, but there are just a, a very minimal amount of retouching done on these. Of course, um, you can see the, the bags I have, have under my eyes now. And I did take out a little bit of that and a little bit under mom, but I, I'm not supposed to bring that up, I don't think. Um, Mom, did you have anything to, to say about the selection of the images or um, the catalogs? Did you want me to talk about the catalog? Well, um, I had asked Mom earlier um, where the catalogs, um, what happens to them. And back when she was on the board and, and still member at large, the, uh, the catalogs were given to the Beatley Library and one for special collection. What's the difference between uh, those two? Is it just, do you understand the question? The Beatley Library was the, the main regional library and special collections is at the Queen Street Library. And the fact that they were accepted library was a positive thing for the program. 
Um, they don't take everything, but this was recognized as being a significant record of Alexandria's history. And the same, um, we got a call or a letter from the Library of Virginia in Richmond asking to buy a copy of the catalog. And while I was there, they bought a copy each year. I don't know whether they still do, whether the mechanism is in place, but we also had them um, at the US Library of Congress. Again, not an easy thing because storage space is limited. So the fact that they were recognized as important documents was um, really important to me because that was my vision um, of the project when it started. I, I said there is a lot of um, colonial history that's easily available in Alexandria, but not current history, not, no place that in an organized way document Alexandria's current history. And that's what I set out to do. And with Stephen and Lynn, that's what we did. And I retired in uh, 2015 when I turned 75 for two reasons. One, I was tired. And two, I wanted to believe that the program would go on without me. And it has a board of directors and it has gone on without me. Um, not exactly everything that I want, but hey, I, I'm not in charge anymore. So um, the the website for uh, Living Legends is alexandrialegends.org. And there you can see um, photographs of all of the legends. And when you click on them, uh, I think it takes you to the story in the catalog that talks about them. So it, it all should be available if you want to check um, on anybody's story. And also, if you want to see whether anybody else had been um, recognized as a legend. What I hear from Jeannie Feisman, who's president of Living Legends, is that the website is being updated. And the criteria for the 2022 legends will be on the site shortly. Um, there was not a call for legends for 2021 because of the pandemic, but they're supposed to be back in charge, um, back on target. I'm looking at Pat Miller's smile. It's such a beautiful smile. Uh, <laughs> um, they're supposed to be back on target very, very soon. Um, I wanted to just again talk about the, the black and the white. As Stephen told you, I started doing black and white because I photographed in black and white, but also black and white to me said history just by its being black and white. It set these portraits apart from the thousands of images that we see every day. So I personally, as a photojournalist, love black and white photography. I, I agree with Stephen, it's less distracting. You just focus on what's in the picture rather than on the colors in the picture. I chose square because that initially was the format of the film that I used. I used a two and a quarter square format camera. And again, it set the portraits apart from everything else that we see. We're used to seeing um, rectangular images from 35 millimeter portraits. Um, and people often ask, why did you do 12 again? And Stephen said, initially the Gazette published one a month. Um, the Gazette was the founding media partner and they kicked in money the first couple of years. And when things got really tight for the papers and Jerry Vernon and said, we can't do this anymore. I said, I understand. 
and that I'm gonna open it up to other papers as well. And that's what happened. Uh, for a while, there was a paper called um, Alexandria News. It was a monthly paper and they carry stories. The um, zebra carried the stories and still does. There's not any more just 12. It could be more, it could be less. At the beginning, I photographed one who was nominated and um, at least a paragraph about them was published. That is no longer done. So it's just people who are recognized as legends. Still, it's to me really important that this is being done. And aside from my kids, I do think it's the best legacy that I ever did for Alexandria. And um, so it was, sorry, it was uh, 2020 that they did that they didn't have a call for entries, which and we lost 2020 in the great uh, uh, covoid um, fell into the cracks. But the uh, I do have copies of the nomination forms. They're supposed to be printed and put out in the city hall as well. Um, before, uh, Mom, were you finished? I'm sorry for interrupting you. I was just going to bring up the uh, merging paths thing. I don't know if that's on your. Um, it's, uh, I don't, go ahead and bring it up because uh, um, it may or may not be on my, my cheat sheet in front of me. <laughs> um, in 2000, and what was the year, Stephen? 1980. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I did a study of worship in Alexandria, um, a photographic documentation of worship in the city. And right now, those photographs are, are being re-exhibited at the Lyceum, and they'll be there until December of this year, over 100 photographs of worship in the city. The Lyceum is located on South Washington Street, the 200 block of Washington Street, and Stephen's studio is now at 403 South Washington Street. So it's easy to see both places at one time with, with a, a call to both. Um, I think that's what I wanted to say. Okay. So I was going to say, um since I have a, a platform here, uh, just uh, before we open up to questions, just, just some personal reflections on photography um, over the last 30 years, or maybe it's only 20 since we've only had digital cameras for the last 20 years, but um, it's been called kind of the great digital divide. I'm not sure if it's called the great for us photographers, but well, we certainly had to learn a new uh, way of shooting and a new way of competing with uh, photographers. Um, generally, we're inundated with images and everyone has a camera in the pocket these days. Um, it used to be in the early days of digital photography, people still wanted to hold the images in their hands because we had a, an intimate relationship with photography. But today, people are like, oh, I just need it on my phone. I'm just gonna send it to somebody because we have shoebox after shoebox of pictures and you don't know what to do them except scan them in and make them digital. So uh, about 15 years ago, mom had asked me to photograph some of her childhood pictures of family reunions. And uh, mom was one of the big, she's like, I want to hold the pictures. I want to see them in my hand. And I sent her the images digitally after I'd um, scanned them in and she said, I've never looked at it this intimately on, on the screen because I can zoom into it and I can focus in on these little parts. So she, she didn't really flip flop. She still wants to hold prints in her hands or see them on the wall. But just the fact that it was, it was now digital, she had a different relationship to it. Um, um, 
one of the things that we're sort of being rewired to do is that all the pictures that we see, for the most part, if they're professional, they're just a lot sharper, uh, more vibrant, uh, magazines, uh, things never used to be this sharp. And now when you see something that is on film, you're like, you wanna know why it's out of focus. And it's not, it's just that film, um, although it has more pixels or more dots and grain, it, it, uh, it doesn't, it isn't often used that sharpening app that that that's used. So um, the the question here is, um, although we see more because pictures are everywhere, um, are we seeing less? Is there um, have we do we tune out more of these pictures um, than uh, than we get back? Um, so when my studio was on Upper King Street, and changing subjects a little bit, I used to get people coming to my shop, sometimes one a week, uh, at least twice a month, who wanted jobs. And they would, um, in the later years, even in the early years, they would never bring a portfolio. They just wanted to think, oh, this sounds cool. Can I get a job as a photographer? And um, I would say, bring me back a portfolio and I'll give you a critique and uh, bring me a resume. Let me know what your experience what your experiences are. And I think in, in 30 years there, I had one person bring me a, a portfolio that had nothing to do with people. And uh, one of mom's early stories is from the Gazette packet. I just told him, I said, do you have anything that, uh, any subjects that move faster than, than, than a snail? Because they were all trees and, and flowers and they're all good stuff, but not, what I was looking for as an assistant doing photo shoots. Of course, mom's story with the uh, Jim Coldsmith is that she said, he said that, um, do you have anything that moves faster than a plant growing? Because when she was working on Capitol Hill, she brought in uh, pictures uh, from the botanical gardens. So it was, uh, it was interesting to me that, that um, back then people thought it was a fun fun job but it is it's hard work and we uh um we we had our fun for 30 years being sort of prime time before things got uh digital um and i'd like to think that there's still a future in it although i i'm just not sure how much uh uh if how much future there is in, in this as a profession. Uh, one of the things I tell people when they used to come by is um, if you want to get into photography, pick one thing, do it really good um, because it, this is not an age where you can do architectural tabletop portraits, weddings. Um, if you're going to put your name out there, you really need to be good and excellent at one thing. Um, when we were running to Sarah Photography, or when, because mom would do the business portraits, I would do the events, I would do the weddings, we would all do the weddings. And uh, back in the early 90s, we did, we really did 40 weddings each every year, which is almost every weekend. And it just, uh, it kind of wore us out. We, I'd still love to do weddings, but it's just not the, um, I get requests and people are more focused on budget than quality. And, uh, and I guess that's pretty much uh, the way it goes for a lot of people. So um, um, I guess open it up. Were there any questions that came in or did I go over time or does anybody have anything that they wanna share or ask? Okay, well, I'll unmute myself. We did get a question I think was answered, a couple of questions. One is about where to find a list of the legends. And I believe that is on the website, which I put in the chat and Nina also mentioned it, living, I mean, alexandrialegends.org. And there's also yeah. a question about how to nominate somebody, which I think you did cover, but is there a, can, can you get access of, the nomination form on the website as well. When I emailed me on Monday, she said they, they'd had some technical difficulties 
but she sent it to me. So I have it in a Word doc and I can send it to you and you can disseminate it or share it. She, she was supposed to also put copies of it in the, uh, um, the, uh, the lobby where the other portraits are. So I really encourage people to uh, nominate um, just to uh, the people that have made contribution to the city. And uh, it looked from what I saw that they want to receive a, uh, a paper, receive it on paper, not to have it emailed to them. But uh, it may be that they, uh, if they get it that way, they'll just print it out. So whatever is easiest for you. So okay. we're, Catherine, do you have any questions? Okay, yeah, that was any the only out? question that came on the chat, but if, I guess if anyone else has a question, they can, you know, unmute themselves and ask. Um, hi, I just figured out how to unmute myself. Now all I see is me, whatever I did. Um, but um, I just, um, I wanted to uh, first thank Stephen for, um, Stephen and Nina, uh, mm -hmm. for, for doing our presentation uh, this evening and sharing uh, this um, unique and uh, vital program here in the city of Alexandria and um, thank them for, for all that they have done to, to, to make this, uh, you know, to create this and, and to keep it going. Um, I have to say over the years, as I have read the, um, the stories, um, so many of the people in Living Legends are people that, that I've known, you know, in the community and known them for years. And, and when I read their stories, I think, wow, I did not really know that person. So many of the legends have done so much more than you have seen them do. They have done so much behind the scenes. And so this, this program just uh, brings to the, to the fore, um, you know, you're seeing the tip of the iceberg. This, this program is, is sharing with you what's below the surface. Uh, and, and, and so much more that you can learn about these, these, um, uh, these, these other uh, people that I am, I am uh, privileged to, to be part of um, in this Living Legends program. Um, and I would say one more thing, I would uh, stand up and show you my, if you can see it, if you can read it in the glare, my Living yeah. Legends of Alexandria t-shirt, which I wear often and proudly. Um, so mm -hmm. thank you to uh, Nina and Stephen for doing this. Thank you, Catherine. That's great. Um, <laughs> I take the floor one more minute. I got um, an email yesterday from someone telling me that one of the legends had had a massive stroke and wasn't expected to survive. And where could her family get the living legend story for use in a future obit? And I was able to shoot them the story and the photograph that was given by Stephen. When I followed up, there had been no further word on whether this woman managed to survive or, or where she is in her recovery. But when the call came, I thought, this is exactly why Living Legends was created. That when the time comes and you want the stories and you want the photographs, there is now a way, there is a process, there is a system for getting the photographs and the stories. And that's what I'm so pleased to have started. I'm, for my part, I got to meet a lot of really special people. Amen. Okay. Are there any other questions? Okay, well, thank you very much for sharing uh, sharing the information about living legends and some kind of uh, behind the scenes secrets of photographers. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure exactly what you wanted. I hope I gave you something about what you wanted. 
Um, I've been going over scripts for the last two days, and, and there's just so much information. It's hard to it's hard to distill it into what do they care about, what do you want to know, and uh, mom's background, which which uh, which is important back in our early days. Um, I know that part of this has been on, um, part of this was on a uh, article for the, uh, the zebra. And she was telling me that if, because I sent her my rough draft, she said, well, there are a few typos, but maybe we can put it in the zebra next month. <laughs> so uh, I, hope, I hope that everybody is um, happy enough. Right, Beth? Yes, yes, thank you. Right. And I guess for, you know, I'll just repeat for further information about the Living Legends, you can go to the website, alexandrialegends.org. And are there any other, you know, websites or social media places we could direct people to for more information about, about you or your work? Well, my uh, my website is sarahphoto.com and it's on the it's on the top of this page. Um, the emails on the top of the page um, up here uh, at, in my phone number. So mom's mosaics are uh, under Nina Tessera.com and uh, she has I photograph all of her mosaics so they're um, they're split into two pages. If someone buys a mosaic, it gets moved over to a page that says adopted or, um, and also there are some that are commissioned because sometimes people wanna buy something similar to what's already been done. Um, initially, um, I was gonna talk more about, or had thought I might talk about photographing the artwork, but it's really complicated. And I know that you all have your systems in place, but, um, Feel free to contact me if you're thinking about having something photographed and I can give you some one-on-one -on -one, or you can Google cross polarization of uh, cross polarization for copy work. And uh, there are four or five people out there that have done websites or YouTube videos on, on how to uh, get better copies of artwork when you copy it. And of course, I'm available for portraits, weddings, bar mitzvahs. Uh, if uh, anybody has special occasions coming up and they are looking for a photographer. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome.